I'm talking all about faux fur and I'm starting right now. <laughs> guys, it's Elizabeth from ElizabethMadeThis.com helping you sew something creative. If that is up your alley, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today I wanted to talk all about faux fur. I have been sewing quite a bit of it the last couple months between Halloween sewing and just making some faux, faux fur boot covers. <laughs> And I have learned a lot about it and gotten better at being able to handle it and I wanted to share my best practices for just dealing with it so that you can try it out for yourself. It doesn't have to be this messy, awful experience where you feel like you have to, you know, buy 18 lint rollers. Or it's one of those crabby fabrics and it's, there's some things that we can do to make it a lot easier to handle and a lot easier to, to just deal with in general. So let me get into my tips and I will see you on the other side. First thing, just pick a simple pattern. Faux fur is something that is extremely bulky. If you make something from faux fur that's too close to the body, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to work. So think about something that's more boxy in shape and also just doesn't have a lot of seams because every single seam that you deal with is going to require some, some more effort than just sewing through cotton or something simple. <laughs> Faux fur vests, collars, who covers really, really simple, basic, basic things that are just don't have a lot of don't have a lot of shape to them work great for faux fur. So here I'm working with a full size pattern piece. So the fur is too bulky to cut on the fold. So if you do want to use a traditional pattern piece, then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to mark the center the center and part of the edge before you go ahead and flip it over. But I think it's just easier to work with a full size pattern pattern piece. That means that you you just you're not gonna have to mess around with it and it's also not gonna move on you when you try and put it on there. So you can see I just started to trace my edge and you can use chalk for this. I'm just gonna use a really fine line Sharpie here. Trace around the edge. I like using the Sharpie versus, versus chalk because I can see exactly where the edge is and I can get right on that edge without it moving on me. This is the biggest tip for dealing with faux fur without it, without it going bananas on you and just getting all kind of messy. We're going to use a box cutter. So another thing we want to think about is the nap of the fabric when we go to cut it. So before we lay this out on the other side, we need to recognize how the fur is moving. So if you run, if you run your hands on it, you can see it goes one direction that way, sits another direction the other way. So I'm going to place my my pieces down there, making sure that they're all facing the same way. So there's my neckline, neckline, that's the top of my cap, all of them. They're all facing the same way. So that way when I go when I go to make my actual garment, the fur is all going to sit in that nice, same, even direction. <laughs> so this is kind of an untraditional, a non-traditional cutting device, but it's really going to help us get through that without cutting any of the fur on it, which means that it's going to keep it clean. So I'm just going to go along my edge and I'm just going to it takes tiny little cuts at a time and yeah you're gonna have to if you can work downwards it's probably better for you to be able to just do it accurately but even just doing that you can see that the fur just kind of pulls apart from each other there's no mess on my surface and it's just getting right through right through all of that without any kind of extra nonsense so this takes some time but it's also gonna just be way cleaner than if we we're gonna just go and you know rotary cutter this and it's really really tempting people to do that but don't do it because you can see you can just pull that straight apart from each other no mess no mess it's great so i'm just gonna keep going all the way around this and that's gonna cut my piece so when we go to sew faux fur seam allowances there's lots of different ways that we can we can attempt this and you can see that all of them, we really don't really see the seam too too much. And that's because the pile is just, it kind of disguises that, which is kind of cool. But we kind of, the one thing that we really want to do is keep out any kind of bulk from the seam allowance. So there's a couple ways we can tackle that. First way is to cut down the seam allowance to about a quarter inch. You can sew faux fur with, with the traditional 5 eighths inch seam allowance like you'll see on most patterns. But what's going to happen is that you're going to have more and more bulk 
into the seam allowance. Now that can be nice because it'll it'll open up on the on the back side with a nice with a nice flat flat sort of thing on the inside, but it's also going to be a lot harder to sew. So if you cut that seam allowance down to about a quarter inch, it's going to be a lot easier to work with. And then you don't have to tuck in all the hairs so much and it's just going to be a lot nicer to sew it. Okay, so the other thing that you want to do is when you when you're trying to keep these edges together, go ahead and use some of these clips. You can use binder clips. These are one clips by Clover and they are really nice for just really crabby fabrics that don't like to stay together. So and I usually, I would not say use pins here because the pins are just not as strong as these and just use a straight stitch but lengthen it to about 3.0 and I'm just going to keep a nice quarter inch seam allowance going along. Just remove the clips as you're going. You can see it's actually pretty easy to to sew this seam with that quarter inch seam allowance. It's just keeping keeping all of all of the bulk into the body and out of the that seam edge by staying really close to the edge. The one thing you want to make sure is that your your edges are even. So if you're feeling like they're they're gonna be even uneven, then just stop halfway in the middle of the seam and flip it over and then sew from the other side. And also be careful when you're sewing that quarter inch seam allowance that those edges are right next to each other because it could be really easy for one side to shift and then for, for you to have a hole in your seam. So just watch out for that. And then just overlap that stitch when you get on the other side of the seam. But if we go there, you can see it's nice it's very difficult to see where that seam is and it's just lovely. Another way you can do that is to cut that seam allowance down to, to a quarter inch, but use your serger to sew it instead. I just took a piece of knit fabric just to start the seam and that's just going straight into my seam allowance. That way it doesn't get caught on the edge there. It's really nice and easy. And then that serves the same purpose but it makes it also a little bit cleaner on the inside too if you use the serger. So that's another way to deal with it. Again, you can see it's nice and clean. You can barely see where that seam is. And then this is probably the, the least bulky way, but it's also probably a little bit more advanced way to take care of it. So I've taken my two pieces and I've put them right next to each other so that that backing is meeting right along the edge. And then I am going to take just a hand needle and I've got some tailor's thread. Just any kind of any kind of thread that you have on hand is fine. Um, I like this tailor's thread because it's got a little bit of wax on it and that makes it a little bit easier to pull it out later. Silk thread is also really helpful here if you don't have tailor's thread. Um, okay, so I'm just moving my needle from one side and I'm just gonna go a couple stitches in, in there and I'm just going to do a little over overcast stitch and that is just gonna bring those edges right together. This is not strong enough to hold this obviously so we are going to zigzag over these in just a little bit and we're going to use some tool tape over the over that seam just to make it really really nice and secure. But before we do that we have to make sure that those edges are right hanging out next to each other and they don't like to stay there. So that's why we're using the hand basting here. So I'm just moving any faux fur out of the way as I'm going along putting it back inside that seam. So I have no seam allowances here. I've cut off all of the seam allowances and I'm just bringing the edges together. So this is the least bulky way to put to make a seam on faux fur. Obviously this takes a little bit more time, but you're going to be rewarded with a nice not bulky seam. Okay, so that's the end of my thread. I'm just going to clip that. I'm going to grab my tool tape and I'm going to put it right out, right down the center of that. I'm going to switch to a, a zigzag stitch and I am going to go right down the middle of my tape. Okay, so let's see how we did. So it's nice and clean on this side, obviously. There's no bulk, no bulk. If I turn it over to the other side, I kind of just work that out with my fingers. You can see, you can barely see the seam. It's nice and strong. It's not going anywhere. So that's another way that you can sew your faux fur seam. You also want to comb your seams every time that you have, you've sewn a seam. Say I've got my seam here and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna comb it. It's gonna catch any weird hairs that might be stuck inside of the seam and it's just gonna make it a lot nicer. So if we talk about how to finish the insides of faux fur, it's really best if you're sewing something where you're gonna need multiple layers on top of each other to, to finish it off with lining. 
I, I did that with this with this faux fur collar and I just did it right up to the edge. I'm gonna grab this. This is a ready-to-wear vest that I've got and you can see it's it is it's it's just lined right up to the edge and they even understitched understitched the lining so it rolls nice nice and clean to the inside and it's just a really beautiful finish. The nice thing about lining is that it's really luxurious on the inside and it's gonna feel really nice on the outside as well. So those are really great things to keep in mind. If you don't want to line your faux fur, you can use bias tape that also works really really well for finishing off your edges on faux fur. We don't want to ever hem this because you if you if you do that it is going to just flatten it and it's going to look really really bad you're going to have a line just going straight across that and plus you're going to have to wrestle with all these hairs going underneath your 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 presser foot and it's just going to be a hot mess so do not hem it whatever you do just use it use a lining or use bias tape to finish that off so hopefully you got some good faux fur sewing tips again you can use you can use any of these tips just to practice your your faux fur skills and I've got some other products on my blog and also here on this channel that I will link down in the description box so that you can just practice practice out your faux fur technique. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Hey guys I hope you had a good time learning about faux fur. There's lots of other stuff here happening on Elizabeth Mavis so go check it out and I will see you in the next video. Happy sewing!